Hi Booktube, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the third installment of my September reading vlog. In this vlog, I'm going to share my reading experience of three more books. The first is The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. This is one of the books that's been nominated for the Man Booker Prize. It's one of the six books that's been shortlisted and I'm still not sure why. So that gives you a little clue in as to how I felt about the book. I read this book on the train because the scene where the inmates are being transferred made me think of the orange plastic seats on the subway and I also brought the Mars Room to Starbucks and ordered a sweet frothy drink because this is the kind of book that needs a little sugar to go along with it. This is a story of Romy Hall. She's an inmate in a California prison. When we meet her, she's been convicted of murder and she's serving the first of two consecutive life sentences and in the first scene she and her fellow inmates are being transferred from the jail to the prison and it tells that story in very vivid detail because it's written in stream of consciousness format or at least i think it tells the story in vivid detail i'm not a big connoisseur of literature or art form that has to do with women in prison or people in prison in general I haven't watched Orange is the New Black. I'm not a fan of that kind of genre, but the fact that this book was recognized by the Man Booker Committee means that I want to read it, even if I won't say that I'm necessarily swayed by the fact that it's on the list, because I still can recognize the flaws in the book, even if it's nominated for a prize that I look up to. So the novel is written in stream of consciousness format, and it flips between perspectives. It shows Romy in her present life where she's in the prison, but it also flashes back to her memories, her childhood, uh, moments where she was abused, relationships that she got involved in that took her down the wrong path. So it's like a switching back from one prison to another, which I think was a really clever way for the author to mirror the fact that she's serving two life sentences as punishment for her crime, but the fact that she's moving from a prison on the outside to a prison on the inside is also two consecutive life sentences. So I recognize the writing skill that the author was able to employ in writing this book. And there was lots of other literary quality to this novel. Like there's a character who is a teacher. He's a professor, but a failed professor of some sorts because he hasn't been able to get a job to pay him enough for him to stay in academia. So he's taken a job in the women's prison where he's supposed to be coming to teach GED. But I like the fact that when he arrives, his pet student is Romy Hall. And while he would want to teach her GED preparation, she's a... Uh, more advanced academically because she was accepted to college even if she didn't attend and so she doesn't need the kind of preparation that he would want to give her i like that you know even while people are incarcerated that they're not to be looked down on i do remember hearing sometime that a lot of people in jail qualify for law degrees because they spend so much time researching the law albeit to help their own cases but that's not the point. But I really like the inclusion of this male character, Gordon Hauser, and the conversations that he had with his friend and fellow professor. And the link that the author made between what was happening in this woman's prison, but also other academic criminals, if that's, uh, if that's a term that we can use. She mentioned Ted Kaczynski, who was a math professor before he became the Unabomber. And the fact that we have this professor who's now in in prison well he's not in prison but he's working in the prison and while he's there to affect and influence the prisoners influence you know works both ways and so while he's there he starts to commit petty crimes on behalf of the inmates that he's met and I like the comparison that the author made between those petty crimes that he seemed to think that he was committing for greater good but the link that she was making with other people who also feel like their motives for committing crimes are justified. And so I, I really liked that part of the book. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the prison drama genre. And I don't necessarily like reading books that have these graphic details that feel like they're only included for shock value. There were some scenes in here that I didn't really think they added to the plot of the story. And we did move back and forth to read from the perspective of other inmates who I don't feel like their little subplot drama really had anything to do with the main story. 
unless it was to just show that Romy Hall's experience was not limited to her and to show the universality of what she was experiencing. But other than that, I didn't get a lot of benefit from some of the flipping back and forth, some of the multiple perspectives that we were reading in this book. I also got a little turned off because every criminal who's in this book, and some of these people were criminals, they've admitted to what they did, but they all seem to want to blame all of their crimes on the fact that they were abused as children. And while I do know that some criminals are victims of abuse and turn to a life of crime because of the abuse that they suffered. I know that that's not the experience of every person who's committed a crime. So I didn't like what felt like a strong reliance on cliches. And the fact that every man that we met was either stupid or damaged or an abuser or an abused victim of some sorts. I wanted desperately for there to be a good character, someone who was a good man or a good woman. I didn't necessarily like the fact that while this was a book that was supposed to be focused on women, the only character who seemed to have some redeeming quality was a man. And then even then, we had to have him be stupid and damaged and either an abuser or abused. And so there were a lot of things that I liked about the book that I could go on and on about the compliments, but there would also be a long list of criticisms to follow. But I did like a lot of things about this book, so I don't want to spend too much time focusing on the criticisms. Let me just remind you again of the compliments. I admired the way the author portrayed the universality of crime, how sometimes you start off wanting to do the right thing, you start off wanting to protect the people that you love, and when you feel like you're backed into a corner, you feel like you don't have a choice, even though I know that you always have a choice. You know, sometimes you feel like you don't, or you feel like it's easier to do the wrong thing than it is to do the right. And so I admired the way the author portrayed how our society in general is criminalized. She talked about how people speak about little crimes and we use them in entertainment or we use them for conversation or we use them to, for literature or art but then we don't think about how pervasive crime is in our society and maybe what we are doing to perpetrate that attitude i like the literary inclusions especially in the way of including this professor's character and linking him to ted kaczynski the unabomber and norman mailer and even thoreau all of these academic scholarly people who also committed crimes and linking that to this to these inmates who you know we might want to think of as being from a different part of society than we are but might have more in common with us than we realize but overall when it came time to rate the book i gave it somewhere between a two and three star rating because while it did have some literary value it's not my favorite kind of book to read there were a lot of faults that i felt like i could settle on and still feel comfortable calling them faults even when the the reading was finished and so I'm ready to move on to the next book. This is my eighth book for September so far, and I'm hoping to finish at least 10 books this month. So we'll see where this gets to, but I'm done with book number eight, The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner, shortlisted for the 2018 Mad Booker Prize. I went crazy on NetGalley and I requested some books. I requested a lot of books and four more of them came in. So I'm sending them to my Kindle and I'm gonna be reading them on my phone or on my iPad over the next few weeks. So look out for a lot of NetGalley ARC reviews. It's 3 a.m. and I just finished reading Things That Happened Before the Earthquake by Chiara Barzini. I'd originally said I was gonna DNF this book, but I wanted to come back and finish it because I'd already invested so much time in it. And so I, I mean, there were pages that I skimmed, but I finished a story. It was just this convoluted mess. A young girl named Eugenia, whose parents are very unconventional, they move from Italy because her father is a filmmaker and he wants to pursue this Hollywood dream. And it's kind of a snarky look at what that means to go to California and try to become a movie star or make it big in the movie business. And it's supposed to be a coming of age story. But man, the things that this girl get herself involved in, it's a series of things, a series of scenes where every time something's gonna happen, we meet these characters and they're very disposable because they come in and she describes them and they do something or she talks about an experience with them and then they leave. And 
I didn't like this book. I didn't like the way that the family relationships were portrayed. The book starts off with her describing some really inappropriate behavior between her and her grandmother. There's lots of discussions about her parents being nudists and her grandmother walking around naked. And it compares with all the things that she's concealing from her parents. So while they're physically revealing themselves, emotionally they're all hidden away. And I mean, at some point I thought somebody should call the cops on her parents. The novel is arranged in three parts. Book one is the process of leaving Italy and moving to California, what the integration and assimilation is like as they say they're going to become, you know, movie stars, although they do get a spam commercial as a family and they become famous, but not famous in America, apparently famous in their homeland in Italy. And what it's like for this teenage girl going to public high school and getting involved with gang affiliations and comparing that to her experience going to school in Italy. It's all about the people that she meets and who take advantage of her innocence. Book two is a summer vacation where she and her brother return to Italy and spend the summer getting up to mischief there. And yeah, I said brother because the entire book one, you know that she has a brother, but he's never really mentioned other than appearing kind of like an extra in the movie about her life. And eventually she returns to, eventually they return to California at the end of the summer. And so there's a scene where they're trying to convince the immigration officials that they belong here, even though at some point they're not sure whether they want to belong here. And so there's this discussion on American immigration and people trying to beat the system and what that's like. And then book three is Eugenia getting into even more trouble, getting into even more relationships that are just inappropriate in every way. So a few things that I liked about the book. I like the unconventional writing style. The family was supposed to be making it big in the movie business and the book read like a movie script where actors come in and play their role in a scene and then they exit stage left. And while there was a whole host of characters and a whole host of extras, and some of the characters, when they appeared, you kind of didn't really want them to hang around. But I liked the way that she wrote that and made the movie business not just a plot point, but also part of the writing style. Thought that was really clever. Things that I didn't like, I didn't like the fact that all the family relationships were inappropriate, as though there are no good families here. I mean, even Eugenia's own family, they take advantage of her. They're inappropriate in their demeanor and in the decisions that they make. Her parents are constantly described as being selfish and all the teenagers that she meets also have inappropriate relationships with their parents if their parents are even around. For a coming of age story, I know sometimes it's important to give distance from familial relationships in order to show the character development and this teenager growing, growing into an adult. But I didn't really like the way that that was presented as though that was the only way to grow up for your family to be people that you wanted to escape from for some reason. So I finished the book and it's three o'clock so I don't think I'm going to read anything else tonight. So this happened. I just got some book mail. I know what it is. I know it's a gift. It's from my friend in Japan. Sean the book maniac sent me a book that he was reading and he didn't like it but he knew that I would like it and I just opened the package and let's see what it is oh it's Emily Notham that's her picture it is Fair and Trembling by Emily Notham and it is true to her style it's 120 something pages all her books are 120 something pages hello according to ancient Japanese protocol foreigners dating to approach the emperor did so only with fear and trembling I think I'm gonna read this today. I'm not gonna read the synopsis. I'll tell you about it later. I'm gonna 
start reading this in line and see how long it takes me if I can finish this book before I get to the head of the line. It was much faster than I expected, so I only got to page 11, so I'm gonna have to read this later. So I had this bright idea that I was gonna go in the park this evening and do some reading before I went home, but it looks like it's about to rain. So I'm just gonna go home and finish my reading there because what's a reading vlog if you don't read some of what you're reading at home, right? Everything I've been reading so far has been at home. But... So I'm reading this book because Sean the Book Maniac sent it to me. He started reading it and he told me that he was excited to get into this book by Amelia Notham because I had raved about her. But he stopped in the middle because it changed tone. And I was thinking, how could a book that is 120 pages change tone in the middle? But it does. So the book is about Amelie Notham because all her books star her. And she's pretty young. She's in her early 20s. She's working at this office job. And a man, her not her immediate supervisor, but her supervisor's supervisor, has it in for her and keeps giving her these really mundane, silly tasks to do and has her do them over and over because he's never satisfied with what she's doing. And she finds out that that's what he's doing to her and she rebels. So she starts to work on another project and someone finds out that she's doing these things of her own initiative and they start to kind of bully her because of her Western attitude. And the first 60 pages are her reaction to that. She kind of has a mental breakdown in the middle. And then on page 65, she starts to describe her immediate supervisor, who's another woman. But not just that she's talking about this specific Japanese woman, she's talking about Japanese women in general. Not all Japanese women are beautiful. Um, not that the Japanese woman is a victim. No, if the Japanese woman is to be admired. And I'm like, how did you get to be the expert on Japanese women and Japanese culture, Miss Emily Notham? So I'm going to finish it up and see if it comes back to the story because it was pretty interesting what, what she was doing and where she was going and what was going on in her head and in her life. But I'm going to see, I'm going to wrap this up, see how... Emily Notham, the character, or Emily Notham, the author, brings this story back to a story. So I'm finished Fair and Trembling by Emily Notham. This is my third book that I've read by her this month. And I like her writing. She does epistolary format very well. The first two books that I read from her, Relationships Began with Letters. And in this one, the young woman, Emily Notham, of course, because... All her books feature Emily Notham as the protagonist. Well, in this one, she's kind of like reacting to the protagonist. But Emily Notham is the main character in here. She's the narrator and the main character. And she goes to work for this company, uh, import-export company. And as a Belgian woman working in Japan, she's confronted with the difference in culture i'm fascinated by asian culture japanese culture in particular i don't know a lot about it but i do know that there are some distinct differences between how we see ourselves as individuals and how we see ourselves in relationship with others especially in formal settings although i think western society is probably a lot less formal but in japan relationships are more structured they're more ordered there are things that you think and don't acknowledge because of the respect that you give to your elders or those that you're in more formal relationships with and in this one she uses that difference in culture and cultural appreciation to form the basis of this story so this young woman she's working there and not just that she's western but she's also very young she's in her early 20s i think she's 22. she's seven years younger than her superior who's another woman and the fact that these two women are working in this company that is male dominated means that they are both struggling in their relationship with each other but also struggling in the structure of the company young emily's being tortured is as though she's being bullied by the people above her and one of those people she finds out is her superior who she thinks should be her mentor who she thinks should protect her but when she finds out that 
her her boss her supervisor is the one who's really taking her to task it's very difficult I think for her to acknowledge and that is why in the middle of the book she changes tone and starts to not so much identify but try to understand why her superior why miss Fubuki why miss Fubuki is acting the way she is and because it is Japanese the the names mean something but she talks about fubuki her superior what fubuki means and i think it's supposed to mean a storm and she talks about the irony of that name because her superior at first seems like a very quiet demure personality and of course as the novel progresses that changes her experience with this woman changes but her understanding also evolves and something that i really enjoyed about this book is that notham stayed true to her trademark writing style which is that the book begins with a letter exchange and it also ends with a letter exchange and i found that fascinating I find this book fascinating I think I don't know now Sean the book maniac like I said he sent me this book because he said it was a bit of a digression from his experience of Japanese culture and he just couldn't get into certain parts of it as well as the fact that the book tone changed now I even though I am a full Japanophile I love Japanese culture there's a, so much about it that I don't know or don't understand I found it fascinating that she talked about suicide and you know the ritual of suicide that the samurai would perform to not bring dishonor to their family and she made reference to some of those things in here so I thought that the book was really good in terms of its exploring Japanese culture and comparing it to Western culture and showing some of the difficulties that a person would have as they try to cross cultures as they try to cross very different experiences so i'm giving this a solid three and a half stars and i'm ready to move on to the next thing that's the end of another reading vlog i read three books the mars room by rachel kushner things that happened before the earthquake by Kara barzini and fair and trembling by amelie nofam let me know if you want to talk about these or any other books that i talked about in any of the reading vlogs that i've posted so far for september i think i'm going to read more books in september so there might be at least one more of these vlogs before the end of the month let me know if you're enjoying them and if i should continue doing them in October so thanks for watching this video let's talk in the comments and until next time happy reading bye